Greetings. My name is Atiyah, and I come to you today with an inspired message of love, hope, and healing during this holiday season. I come not from a Muslim perspective. I come not from a Christian perspective. I come not with any perspective that may give rise to fear and cause division. I come from the inspired word of God and I come in the name of and from I am that I am and standing in the I am presence. You can take it or let it alone. The most high or that infinite source of all is one. And I bear witness to the oneness of God and the oneness of the prophetic community of oneness. Sometimes, beloved, you just have to uproot some stuff. And so today, with the help of Almighty God and the angelic host and the ascended masters, I will do just that. And right now, I call upon the archangel's protection and guidance as I deliver this inspired word from on high. God is not to come, but has come, and is present with us. You can also take that or let it alone. Love is the greatest force there is, and it is in this spirit I come and speak to you today to whoever will open their hearts and their minds to listen. It can be very hard to walk in divine soul purpose when there are so many negative forces that constantly work against your rise. There are some out there right now who are trying to find their way, just trying to see the light in the midst of darkness. Perhaps you might see light in this message and be inspired to walk in your divine soul purpose against all odds. Let it be so. This message is intended to help in clearing unhealthy conditioning. It is rooted in love and comes from the awesome spirit of love. Throughout our lives, we meet people from the time that we are tiny children in the cradle all the way to our adult life. That is simply a part of walking in this physical sphere of existence. In our meeting with various people, we build relationships. Some of these relationships are within the realm of our control and others are not. Nonetheless, we build relationships and in doing so, we make two types of connections with every person that we develop a consequential relationship with. The first type of connection are the spiritual connections which contains unconditional love, lessons that you learn with that person, laughter, joy, happy, and good times, affection, and all the positive energy that comes through the relationship. These are positive bonds or positive cords of attachments. And regardless as to whether the relationship is a past or present relationship, this positive cord remains because it contains all the good about the relationship. Now the other type of connection is a negative energy cord, which contains all the negative energies featured in the relationship. For example, if you were married, and there was infidelity in the marriage. Encoded in this negative cord of attachment may be how you felt when you found out about the cheating, such as feelings of anger, betrayal, 
feelings of inadequacy or distrust or abandonment, feelings of wanting to please your mate so they don't leave you. When the marriage ends and the relationship is severed, those negative cords of attachment remains between you and your ex. And this negative cord of attachment contains the unhealthy or the toxic patterns, which are inadequacy, anger, betrayal, distrust, abandonment, not speaking up in order to try and please others at your own expense. Another example um, is with spiritual communities or pastors. You go to church or to some spiritual house and then in the church the preacher preaches a sermon that has very little um, or that is very little rooted in the inspired word of God coupled with a few quotations from Bible, Quran or other spiritual book and encoded in this negative cord of attachment may be how you felt when you heard the message rooted in fear. It may be those feelings of inadequacy, worthlessness, unloved and not accepted, condemned, not good enough, not fitting in, or questions of where you belong. So when your relationship with that spiritual house or preacher is severed, the negative cords of attachment remains between you and that spiritual house or reverend. And this negative cord of attachment contains the unhealthy or toxic patterns of inadequacy, worthlessness, feelings of being unloved or not accepted, condemnation, not good enough, don't fit in, questions as to where you belong, and consequences quenchually not searching within your own soul for truth and instead always looking for someone outside of yourself to always have the answers at the expense of your own gifts and abilities. And these patterns create unhealthy conditioning and depowers you. Clearing unhealthy conditioning starts with removing the patterns. And you remove the patterns by removing the negative energy cords of attachment. See, when you exercise those demons, and that's exactly what they are. Because the etymological root word of demon means an unclean spirit or to divide. And that is what you are doing when you cut out those negative energetic cords. But when you exercise, and to exercise means to banish or drive out everything that divides or that is unclean. But when you exercise, you keep the shadow of past relationships from hanging over you, preventing you from fully walking in your soul purpose. Also, in the process, you actually improve upon current relationships. Now, it's important to understand that all, not some, but all relationships contain two types of connections. However, by removing those negative cords of attachment, you actually strengthen the positive connections because they will no longer be overshadowed by negative energies. Now, beloved, I want you to really listen very carefully to me. If you have been called to listen to this word and this message. You cut the negative cords of attachment by speaking and standing on truth. Your truth. And by walking in the conviction of your truth. When you do this, you remove all shadows. And when we say shadows, we're talking about you remove all that which is hidden or that's in the dark. So you remove all shadows through the practice of transparency. Meaning, be open and honest with where you stand. And each person thereby is able to choose freely the association or the connection. So today, I want to talk about clearing 
unhealthy conditioning and removing those negative cords of attachment. Now, I know early on when I started this, I said that I'm not coming from any perspective that divides or gives rise to fear. But I am coming in the name of and from I am that I am. And there is something that you need to understand today as I am speaking to you because of who I am and who I am that I am. There is the biblical perspective that you might hear because I grew up in the church. I was baptized with physical water and received my call to ministry early on. Two, you might hear a Quranic perspective because I spent over 20 years of my life as a practicing Muslim and was baptized with spiritual water and it was where I received my training as a minister. And three, you may hear my Native American slash black perspective. I am of mixed ancestry of black and Native America and American. And up until recently, I completely rejected my Native American ancestry. And by doing so, thereby was rejecting my birthright. However, today, I fully embrace my heritage and my birthright. And it is therein where I received my anointing through spirit, even before I knew my purpose and my calling. And even then, before I was trained, it is through my birthright. That I received the anointing. There are two things I want to establish at the forefront. One, with all with God, all things are possible. Two, love is the creative force of everything in existence. And I want to say that again. These two things I want to establish at the forefront. One, with God all things are possible. Two, love is the creative force of everything in existence. This holiday season, beloved, many people might be celebrating the birth of Jesus the Christ, known as Christmas. Some may be celebrating Hanukkah. Some may be celebrating Kwanzaa. And some may be even celebrating Ramadan in the month of December. But regardless as to what walk you are on, there are many people celebrating an occasion that is dear to their hearts and are very important landmarks in their traditions. There is nothing wrong with that, and that is their choice to do so. For me, every day, is a celebration of life and a demonstration of gratitude, appreciation, and honor of all life, regardless of path, regardless of belief system, regardless of culture, of nationalism, of status, class, and age. You know what I'm talking about. All those things that divide or people use as a way to divide. And instead of saying people, I really should say the enemy. You know, all of those things that the enemy uses to divide people. Okay? To me, there is only one path. And that one path is divine love and oneness. When I look at the many people who I have met on my journey thus far, I realize that I have been and I am very, very fortunate and blessed to have met some very beautiful beings of light and love. I have met people who have traveled the way of Yahweh. I have met people who have traveled the path of Jehovah. I have met people who have traveled the way of Jesus, who travels the way of Muhammad of Buddha 
and other entities that they recognize as the infinite source of all. And you know it is so amazing because you can always tell the enlightened ones regardless of what label they place on themselves. You can always tell the enlightened ones because they are not bogged down by what divides but rather recognizes one simple and basic truth and that is love and oneness. When I have had the opportunity and the blessing to spend time with these enlightened people, we have celebrated the beauty of that infinite source of all, regardless of our individual point of reference or our individual label that we place on these beings of light and love. We are able to share with one another freely and openly and in the spirit of transparency. And by doing so, we have been able to learn from one another and we respect each other's path and we honor each other as family members of our greater family and circle of life. You know that love is. You know that love is because our differences are embraced and there is no need to defend our individual belief systems or prove that our individual way or path is the only path. We recognize and understand and allow the great spirit or that infinite spirit to take on its own light path and we honor their path and their truth. Beloved, every entity that light beings recognize as the infinite source of all has one thing in common. And this is what I have come to understand. Whether it be Yahweh, Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, Muhammad, Jehovah, or someone else, there is a common thread of what they teach or talk, and that is divine love and oneness. And see, just as it is easy to see the enlightened ones, it is also very easy to recognize those who are operating out of a spirit of fear. Because when a person is operating or speaking out of the spirit of fear, they act or teach on what divides or separates. They make the differences between the one's creations appear paramount and problematic or just wrong as opposed to encouraging acceptance, understanding, appreciation, respect, and honor. When a person is operating out of the spirit of fear, it has a tremendous impact and what is begotten from that spirit is confusion, destruction, division, and all the other demons that rise up causing division and non-acceptance and lack of love and oneness. Now, in the biblical text, 2 Timothy, the first chapter and 7th verse, it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In some writings, sound mind has been replaced with self-discipline. Either way, the one spirit is not based in fear. It is based in power, love, and free from special defect or injury. It is a healthy love heals while fear kills and destroys and robs you of a loving spirit. In the biblical text, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter and 33rd verse, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Now, 
I have to deal with that other section another time and in another message. So for those who are listening and criticizing me right now and thinking or saying, yeah, read the rest of the verses surrounding that one. Like I said, you can always tell when one is acting or speaking out of the spirit of fear. And the Corinthians were no different. They had their battles in balancing yin and yang energy. Or should I say their battles between the genders and power struggles. And it plays out in the scripture. But as it says in Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord of Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. We are led, beloved, by the spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of love or the spirit of God. It's not by might. It's not by how much knowledge we have. It's not by how much strength or power we have. But it's by the spirit. And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus' commandment was to love ye one another even as I have loved you as taught in John of the biblical text. The key is love and oneness. In John it also says that he who has not love has no knowledge of God because God is love. And the truth is love is not what you say, it's what you do. Love is not some jive time emotion or something that rises up in this heart that can be transplanted. Divine love is far greater and more powerful. It is the creative force of all that we tangibly see. See, the enlightened ones know, not believe, but they know because it is through the spirit. You discern through your spirit. And the spirit of love is that creative force. It's not a destructive force. Love builds while fear tears down. Yet, hear me out. Yet, both energies are used in every connection and relationship. The key to our success is to strengthen positive bonds of unconditional love and to remove negative energy cords of attachment. These cords are the demons that possess people. So today I am going to exercise some demons starting with my own and sharing in hopes of giving other people hope and to Began the process of them being able to remove these negative cords of attachments in their own lives. Again, the key to strengthen positive bonds of unconditional love is and to remove negative energy cords of attachments. Now, I want to share something. I, too, like everyone else, have had built relationships over the years. And... In these relationships, no matter how powerful and loving they are or the experiences have been, there have also been negative cords of attachment that has taken root. And throughout the course of my journey, I have consistently and constantly dealt with my own demons and my inner demons. But there are a few that need to be dealt with that. I'm doing now here in this message. And the interesting thing is, it started out years ago um, with the Pentecostal church I visited with a childhood friend when I was a young teen. I am cutting the cord of attachment, that negative cord of attachment, because encoded in this cord of attachment is how I felt 
when the speaker called me and many other of the young people there little demons. Now, whoever the speaker is, you know who you are. Your statement was made in the spirit of fear and it no longer has power over me or my life or my children's life or anyone else that has developed a meaningful relationship with me over the years. I visited the church with my neighborhood friend and I love to go to church and wanted to go with my friend. And the beauty is my mother would always allow me to go to church when I was invited. She didn't go herself. But she never told me no when I wanted to go with someone else. The, my mother never taught me how to believe. She always told me to follow my heart and to judge people by the context of their character and not the color of their skin or whether or not they were poor or had money or some of the other superficial things like that. She told me to look at a person's character and how they treat you and let that be the judge. Now, in terms of with this Pentecostal church, I don't remember or recall the name of the church. I don't even recall the name of the young lady who invited me. It's been many, many years ago. I was in my early teens. But I am cutting this negative cord of attachment because when I visited the church by invitation of my friend whose family went to that church and the speaker, I'm speaking to you, you called her and all of us youth there, demons. The feelings attached to that was confusion, rejection, and non-acceptance. So I am cutting this negative cord of attachment because it is unhealthy and it is based in the spirit of fear. Reverend Cleveland Thomas of New Morning Star Baptist Church in Peoria, Illinois. I am cutting this negative cord of attachment because encoded in this cord of attachment is how I felt when you said to me I was condemned to hell. Your statement was made in the spirit of fear and no longer has and it no longer has power over me or my life or my children's life or anyone else that has developed a meaningful relationship to me over the years. When you said this to me, me and the man I was engaged to at the time went to you at the encouragement of my Aunt Gigi Farmer, who had been a longtime member of the church. I often attended Morning Star Baptist Church when Reverend Hightower was alive. He was a beautiful spirit, a loving spirit. I didn't know you. I had never met you, but looked forward to meeting you because of my aunt. You and my then fiance had wonderful exchanges until you found out about an hour into the conversation that he was walking the path of Islam. Initially, there was no dissension between the two. And then when he mentioned that, there, the spirit of fear rose up. So when you found out that he was Muslim, you called him disrespectful. You condemned me to hell because I was about to marry a Muslim. And because as you asked me questions, I didn't believe everything that you believed. In your frustration with me not believing everything you believe when you were trying to convince me to believe it. In my heart. I didn't think it was right and I was I felt that I needed to stand on what was right but in your frustration you yelled at your wife at that time whose name was Beverly you yelled at her in our presence and you made her cry now I knew Beverly before you married her and I knew how beautiful of a person she was and when you made her cry you made me cry and I was about to get married and you were setting a horrible example of how a woman should be treated by a man, especially a so-called man of God. She didn't speak up for herself and I found it to be very abusive. But I'm cutting this negative cord of attachment because when you told me that I was going to hell and when you yelled at your wife and she just sat there and cried, the feelings attached to that was verbal abuse, anger, worthlessness, less feelings of less than because I'm a woman and an overcompensation and need to defend women, women and control situations as to not be abused and to consistently seek acceptance 
and approval from men in power at the expense of my own calling, although I am a woman. I am cutting this negative cord of attachment because it is unhealthy and based in the spirit of fear. Bishop Harold Dawson, New Hope, in Peoria, Illinois. I am cutting the negative cord of attachment. Encoded in this cord of attachment is how I felt when you called my family demons. Your statement was made in the spirit of fear and no longer has power over me or my life or my children's life or anyone else that has developed a meaningful relationship with me over the years. I was invited to your church from one of your members. I went to high school with your two daughters, Shannon and Cherie Dawson. They were beautiful people. Cherie, as I recall, was a very gentle spirit. I loved her and we were friends. The church member who invited me was very street. He was thuggish, wishy-washy guy, but he was still struggling to overcome darkness and move into the light. His name was Dondre. I accepted the invitation, not necessarily only because of him, but because of your daughters. He said you were always talking bad about Muslims. Dondre said, but that is not how your family is. This is what he was saying to me. That's not how your family is. And Dondre wanted us to meet you so that you could know that because a person calls themselves a Muslim doesn't mean that they're bad or evil. And so we wanted to support Dondre getting his life together. And so anything that we felt would help in that regard, we wanted good for him. So we would help. He was going to your church at the time and he invited us as his guests. Now my family went to your church and on their they were first time guests. You started preaching against Muslims during that sermon. And when someone attempted to let you know that you had first time guests in your congregation that were from the mosque, you, you said, you know the demons are out there, referring to my family. Now we had never met you before that day, and we didn't even meet you that day. And after the service, we knew that we weren't welcomed, and we left without meeting you, and did our best to lift Dondre's spirit and assure him that all will be well. And I'm not even sure where Dondre is today, but I do pray right now a blessing over his life. But I am cutting this negative cord of attachment, because when we visited your church, Bishop Dawson, by invitation of one of your members, and you called my family demons because we were different than you, the feelings attached to that was hurt, rejection, and distrust and somewhat of betrayal. I am cutting this negative cord of attachment because it is unhealthy and based in the spirit of fear. Evangelist Masco in London, England. I refuse to allow a negative cord of attachment to take root. I'm cutting it before it even tries to attach itself. Encoded in this cord of attachment is how I felt when you judged Islam, slighted Native American culture, and slighted workers who deal with marriage and relationships. Your statements were made in the spirit of fear, and they do not have power over me or my life or my husband's life or anyone else that is developing a meaningful relationship with me. We sat down with you. And I was transparent, open, and completely honest to share my journey with you. You were really bearing witness to the wonderful sharing until you learned that 20 years of my life had been spent walking the way of Islam. At that point, all of a sudden you had an issue with what I believe and wanted to question me about what I believe and if I believe what you believe. I refused to get into a divisive conversation and left the office and left you to speak with my husband, Ingram, who you never once questioned about his belief. I shared with you my story and my journey openly, honestly, and with no hidden agendas. I discussed my culture, my Native American ancestry, and my ministry. On our third visit to your church, during your Sunday sermon, you attacked Islam before the congregation, you slighted Native American culture, and you slighted workers of marriage ministry. I refuse to allow the negative cords of attachment to take root, and I am removing them right now. 
Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am uprooting pain and walking in peace. I am uprooting pain and walking in peace. I am uprooting pain and walking in peace. Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Archangel Michael, please come to me now. Please cut all negative energy cords of fear that are sapping my joy, energy, and vitality. Please clear me of all negativity and fill all voids with God's loving white light. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beloved of God and all of you who are listening, that you are. There is an old Native American proverb. It says, never criticize a man until you've walked a mile in his moccasins. The way to walk in other shoes is to share your journeys through loving and positive bonds that allows you to gain understanding. That way people and things won't be strange to you and you can remove the spirit of fear. You have to learn to paint with all the colors of the wind. Everyone will not look like you or smell like you or feel like you or believe like you or have the same experiences as you have. Yet, by truthfully sharing in the spirit of love and with mutual respect and honor, there are many principles that we all can learn, many good principles. And until we are able to paint with the colors of the wind, we will continue to misunderstand others who are different than ourselves. And we will continue to cause harm out of ignorance and out of fear. And as the song says, you think the only people who are people are the people who look and think like you. But if you walk the footsteps of a stranger, you'll learn things you never knew you never knew. As the biblical text in Hebrew says, let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. I encourage all who are listening to begin to remove these patterns of unhealthy conditioning that depowers you. I encourage you to c clear the unhealthy conditioning by start removing the patterns. And you remove the patterns by removing the negative energy cords of attachment as I just showed you how to do during this message. I want to thank you so much for listening and may those who hear this message be blessed by it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. And you, beloved, are the temple of God. Open your heart, which are the doors to the church. 
Have a wonderful day. God bless. Thank you.